All right, boys and girls, on this video, we're going to look at uh, what is what it's known as compatible numbers or using compatible numbers in order to divide. And so what um, I like to tell my students, especially uh, if you if you see those words compatible numbers, you have to think about what compatible or compatibility means. And so I always have a conversation with my students about compatibility and you know, always kind of use my wife and I, and I, I would say, okay, it has nothing to do with math, but uh, at least it might click a little bit more in your minds as far as compatibility goes. And that is usually, you know, uh, I would hope at least a husband and a wife are compatible. They have things in common. They like the same things. They have the same interests. So me and my wife, we're compatible because we're, we're both teachers. We're both math teachers. Uh, we're compatible in a lot of ways, but that's a big one. Uh, another one would be is we both love sports. We were both athletes and we played in high school and we played in college. And so we are compatible in that way. Well, when it comes to dividing and using compatible numbers, you are looking for some type of, of a connection. And it's like you're, you're looking for this link between the, the dividend and the divisor. And a lot of times the compatibility is facts. You have to know your multiplication facts. And so in this problem here, this problem reads 6,349 divided by 73. And if you were to go solve this problem uh, without compatible numbers, it would take you a while. And I mean, this would be one where you'd have to really go out and show your work and you'd have to, you know, write some facts of 73 out to the side. I mean, it would it take you a while. But if you are using compatible numbers, your life gets really easy. And so a lot of times kids will relate this to estimation because it does look like estimation. You're, you're getting an answer that's close, uh, but you're using compatible numbers instead of actual numbers. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to rewrite this problem underneath using compatible numbers and I want to see if this will will click or make sense. So what I'm going to look at here and this is what I tell my students to look for first, especially if it's a four by two like this one. Uh, I tell my students to look for uh, compatibility in the first digit of the divisor and the first two digits of the dividend. And so in this particular problem I definitely see a link. I see a connection. And again, that link is your facts. And so if you know your facts, you probably already see it with me, and that is 7 can go into 63. 9 times 7 is 63. And so I'm going to rewrite this problem as uh, 70 instead of 73. And Instead of 6,349, I'm going to write it as 6,300 or 6,300. And then I'm going to simply answer this with um, not the actual answer that you would have up top, but now using compatible numbers, I can look at this and go, okay, well, I know that 7 is going to go into 63, and I know that's going to go in 9 times. But I tell my students, you got to be really careful when you do this, though, and you use compatible numbers. You have to really check yourself. And so um, if I checked myself now, I'll write it out to the side, uh, my check would be 70 times 9, which that true answer is only going to be 630. And so now I know, okay, oops, I goofed. I forgot a zero here. And so my true quotient is going to be 90. And so what that's going to tell us is if we did go back to this original problem, we're going to have a, a, a quotient close to 90. And again, so that's kind of where that estimation piece comes in. You're going to really be thinking about estimation when you do this, but the, the language that you're going to be seeing, especially if there's, if there's a test question, they might use the language or the vocabulary compatible numbers. They might say, use compatible numbers to divide, and then they give you your problem or whatever it might be. And so that's, that's an option there. That's, that's just, again, this is just an example, but that's what it's going to look like. You're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to really know your facts when you use compatible numbers, and you're going to have to look for things that, 
you know, make your life easier. This bottom problem was pretty simple. Um, the top problem, if I did that problem, uh, I'd probably still be working on it. All right, on this second page, I'm gonna show another example of compatible numbers. And I'm just gonna kinda of come up with some as we go here. So I'm gonna use the number 4,599. And I'm gonna divide it by, uh, let's divide it by 60, um, let's do 63. Okay, so same thing as the previous page. What I tell my kids to do first is first digit, six and 63, first two digits in the dividend, 45, and so now my, um, you know, my conversation in my classroom would be like this. Uh, I've got to find the link between 6 and 45. So I would think to myself, what is the math fact of 6 that gets me close to 45? Well, I'd have, you know, of course everybody would want to answer and they'd get their own opinion. But there's kind of a couple of things here that you might think of if you really know your facts. Well, the first one that would probably come to my mind would be uh, seven times six, because seven times six is 42, and 42 is really close to 45. And so uh, I might look at this and go, okay, well, let's change this up a little bit here. Let's think about 4,599. Maybe I could change it to 4,200, and then I could change it to, instead of 63, I could change it to 60. And then now looking at this problem, I could simply go, okay, well, I know six can go into 42 seven times. That would only give me the answer, if I left it here as my answer of seven, that would only give me the answer of 420. But if I tacked on another zero there, then I'd be safe and I could go, okay, well, I know it's going to be pretty close to 70. Uh, I'm going to do another one out here, though, just to show uh, sometimes you have to really watch this and you have to, you know, look for maybe what is your best answer choice. And you know, so, again, the language there might be talking about compatible numbers, but maybe it's saying the best answer choice or, or something to that degree. Um, this time I'm going to now go up from 4,599. I'm going to go to really the next fact. Whoops, let me erase that. I'm going to go to the next fact here, which is going to be um, 6 times 8, which is going to give me 48. And so I'm going to write 4,800, 4,800. I'm going to keep the, the 60 the same. But again, here's the link. I know that 6 times 8 gives me 48. I'd have to put that 0 in there for it to be true and for it to match, and then if I checked it 80 times 60, that would give me the answer of 4,800. And so, again, just looking at um, you know what these problems are, you're gonna get a sense of estimation. You're gonna think about, okay, uh, I wanna use something in my mind here, maybe use some mental math, but the language you're gonna see is gonna be you know referring to compatible numbers. And so numbers that are, uh, you know, they, they have a relationship. You can link them together. And again, in my opinion, the true link here is, is going to be multiplication facts. You have to know your multiplication facts. All right, we're going to practice one more. This last page here, I'm going to write a new problem. This time I'm going to go a little bit lower. Um, you don't, you know, it just... You can have two digit divisors, so that could be anything up to the number 99. Uh, this time I'm gonna go back to the teens, and so I'm gonna write a fact, um, or excuse me, a, a divisor of 18, and then I'm gonna put, um, let's do 5,988, okay? So this changes up a little bit here, uh, in my opinion, because now when you're looking at a number in the teens, there's a chance you might know some of those facts. I mean, you're not you're not having to know those, but you know, every now and then I'll have some students in my class, and they're like, "Well, I, hey, I know some 
you know, 15s or I know some 14s. Well, this one's 18. And so I would go back to the whole thing uh, about, you know, you're still using some mental math. You're still looking for a connection. Um, if it were me on something like this, I would make my life easier by thinking about my 20s instead of my 18s. Because again, compatibility, you're looking for a, a link between the divisor and the dividend. And I know some of my 18s, but I don't know all of them, but I know my 20s. And so that's why I would change it. Now, after that, I would sit there and look at, okay, well, how can I change my dividend and make it easier for me to find compatibility? And so now what I would do is I would change this to 6,000. Then by changing it to 6,000, I can look at it and go, okay, well, I see compatibility here in a couple of different places, actually. I see it between uh, the 2 and the 6, or I see it between the 20 and the 60. Because again, if you know how to count by 20s, it's just like counting by 2s. And so 20, 40, 60, I could simply say, okay, well, there's compatibility there. I got to be careful with my answer, though. I've got to really watch what I do. So I know that 20 times 3 gives me 60, but that only gives me 60. And so I'd have to really kind of watch, I always tell my students, really watch your zeros on these. So if I added another zero here and I did 20 times 30 out to the side and I was looking to get an answer there, well, I would pull out the three and the two and I would just say, well, that's six, and then I'd tack on the two zeros. That's still not 6,000. I've got to match it to 6,000 down here. So really, uh, my answer is going to be 300. And if I checked that, 20 times 300, that should give me 6,000. And so I could check it three times two, that gives me the six. Then the three zeros gives me 6,000. And so that's just another way of looking at compatible numbers. Uh, it kind of depends on what the question's asking. Uh, when you're just practicing in them, you're, you're probably going to still try to make that link between the, the divisor and the dividend. And usually that link is going to be multiplication facts. Um, I always tell my students, you want to try to keep it as close to the original as possible. And so sometimes if you don't have to change... Uh, maybe the dividend or you don't have to change the divisor, that's good. But And then there's cases like this where you might have to change both just to make your life easier. And so it's kind of like, well, if I go back to that original problem, 5,988 divided by 18, I would feel pretty comfortable in going, well, my answer here is probably going to be something close to 300. Um, you know, I, I don't, it, we don't know exactly because we're not solving the actual problem, but it should be close to it.